feast your eyes on the Z Fighter. This bike had me at a low. The first time I saw it was at the bike show at Ricerama. And uh, my good friend Carl Soderstrom, who's also a benefactor of the museum, was riding this through. And I, I, he came through and I was like, oh my God. I had followed him to, to his truck and I was like, look at this thing. It's absolutely beautiful. And he said it was for sale. And I said, how much? And he gave me a price and I said, sold. <laughs> and I took it out and uh, rode it around the, uh, the fairgrounds that weekend. And we've had it back at the compound here for a couple months. And it, we're gonna put it up for sale finally after we had our fun with it. We did quite a bit of work to it too. I'll go over that in a second. But this bike is absolutely freaking stunning. It defies categories, it defies description because it is a sit, it's, it's really a, uh, a resto mod. The frame is a, an original 78 KZ1000 Kawasaki as is the engine block, but it's been heavily breathed on. Over five grand in, in parts into the engine alone. It has a Wiseco 1075cc, 10.5 to one compression pistons. It has the ARE heavy duty cylinder studs. The crankshaft was welded when the, when the, the crank was, was taken out. Uh, it's got the Earl's oil cooler in lines, which is a really high quality um, racer oil cooler system. It has a set of the Makuni RS34 flat side carbs, which make the coolest sound at idle. It also has the Dyna S2000 ignition, the Dyna high output ignition coils and wires and the engine has been completely rebuilt from the crank up and tuned to perfection by the Manic Mechanic. Take a look at the exhaust on this thing too. Um, the Manic Mechanic actually mounted the, um, or took the exhaust off and did the blue. He wanted to, he saw it and he's like, hey, I guess I, I, I can get blue uh, exhaust wrap. Why don't we wrap the exhaust so it matches the rest of the bike? So he did that. That's a full Kirker exhaust. It has a a lot of really modern parts on here. So the engine's built to the max. It's absolute freaking rocket ship. This is not for a novice rider. This is a very fun and fast bike, but it's been upgraded to handle the, the power. The front end is off Billy Blythe's favorite rider is a ZRX 1100. This is a 1999 ZRX 1100 front end. Light years better than the 20 years older 78 front end. It's a much more modern front end, much stiffer. The triple clamps, are all off the ZRX, the bar mounts are off the ZRX, the headlight buckets custom, everything from here from here forward is completely upgraded. It has a, the, the Z, Z, ZX Kawasaki mag wheels, it has a ZRX 11 Tokiko six piston calipers with a massive floating rotors, it has braided stainless brake lines, it's got the modern um, master cylinder and the uh, adjustable anodized blue Braking clutch lever, new purchase, new um, all new cables, new switch housings, new bar and mirrors. It even has a brand new tachometer and speedometer. The engine's only got 2,382 miles on it since it's been built, and it, it's it's an absolute rocket ship. ZX style front fairing and a paint job to match. It's got the blue, gold, and black with the, with the black tinted windshield. Even the saddle on this bike has been modified. It's, it's got a special foam and it's been cut down for a little lower sleeker profile. The tail light is, is a clear lens on it. So much more modern front end. And guys, there's over 120 hours labor into this bike. It was stripped right down to the frame. And the frame, as you can see, has been heavily gusseted right here. When we first saw it, I was like, is that a ZRX frame also? It's not, it's a, it's a 78 KZ frame that's been heavily modified and gusseted like the newer bikes. It's a lot, of, a lot of meticulous, painstaking attention to detail here. Um, you can see it has the rear sets on here with the custom brake lever, has the uh, ZRX 1100 passenger peg mounts here and exhaust mount. Then we go to the swing arm, another Kawasaki item. That's also from a 99 Kawasaki ZX also, and the shocks are off a of ZX 1100. Those are the Kayaba piggyback shocks, outstanding shocks. Passenger pegs so you can take your honey out for a terrifying ride on this absolute rocket ship. Um, this, uh, this particular bike, uh, and this, you can get right on it, right into Daytona Beach, Florida, or out to, to, uh, to the West Coast, it's ready to go. Has the, the matching ZX rear wheel, uh, the full complement of braided stainless lines, front and back, all the oil, every oil line on the bike is braided stainless from the, the, the um, uh, all the oil feed, feed lines have been upgraded with braided stainless. The chain of sprockets have been replaced with a nice, Top of the line gold set. The swing arm's been polished. It's got the um, it's got the the uh, the um, blue anodized um, trackside stand spools. It has a, the polished aluminum uh, guard here for the rear rear sets. The engine cases have been polished. Um, 
the counter shaft sprocket cover's been polished. That's original aluminum all polished. The, the valve covers have been, ends have been polished. It's got the braided stainless lines everywhere on the brakes and on the oils, and everything's been done on it. It's, it's, it's got the Pingle fuel pecock. Um, the Manic mechanic went through the bike, top to bottom, front to back, and uh, scoped everything out on it. Put new spark plugs in it, um, changed the engine oil, wrapped the header wrap, uh, cleaned and honed the rear brake caliper, bled the brake fluid, and put Motol 660, 660 brake fluid in it, put a new front brake light switch on it, new hand grips, and gave it a uh, test ride. Then I went to the detail department where Carlos and the boys went over this thing top to bottom. They polished all the aluminum on it. They polished the, the, the clutch cover, the uh, Yoshimura ignition cover. Japanese, but I'm 99% sure that's Yoshimura. Uh, you can see the engine's absolutely beautiful and the, the, the flat side carbs are a huge upgrade. This thing revs really, really smoothly, really freely and right to the moon. PE cover, uh, the block off where the Kickstarter would have gone. Uh, the bike's been lightened, strengthened, boosted to the moon. This is like a KZ1000 on steroids. It's been at the gym for, for 10 years. It's must dripping with muscles and testosterone and it's sex on wheels, man. Look at this thing. The paint job, the color is is, is stunning. It's like a metallic, it's one of my favorite colors. I was thinking of painting my tractor, my, my Kenworth this color. Actually, the only reason I didn't is it wouldn't have matched the, 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 the gas gas red and Motul Red that we had to match it with. So, but this is one of my favorite color combos, the blue. Everybody who's seen the bike's been blown away on it, and um, it speaks for itself. If you were to build this bike today, you have to find a nice 78KZ1000 don't uh, core bike, which one, if you find one that needs just needs a carb clean uh, uh, online and doesn't run, they're, they're typically four to $5,000. Then you've got a, a whole shitload of labor, uh, close to $8,000 in parts, and figure 120 hours of shop labor easily to, 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 to between the crank welding and the whole engine rebuild and, and the, 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 the frame welding, minimum 120 hours labor, which is about 14 grand at today's labor rates here in Connecticut. So you'd spend about 21,000 on parts and labor and then the cost of the bike, you'd easily drop 26, 30 grand to build this today and it would take a shitload of time. This one's done. Uh, the reserve is gonna be a fraction of what the replacement cost is and the bike's an absolute stunner. All that being said, the best part of this thing is the sound that comes out of the, that Kirker exhaust and that absolutely kick-ass KZ1000 engine. So with the high compression Wiseco Pistons, 1,075cc it just makes sounds like the hounds of hell. Let me, let me, let me demonstrate. <laughs> I just wanted to show you the profile of these two bikes here. T take, a, take a look. Um, can you stand it up straight so they can see it? And back it up a little, just a second so it's like... Now stand back and look at this. That's the same frame. 
as this. And you can see all the gusseting. Point to the triangle where the gusseting is not, is not, oh, see this right here? That versus this. You know how much work it is to do that properly? Yeah. And to mount this swing arm in that frame, in this front end on that frame. Even it the shocks are reinforced too. Yeah, check, check it out. The, the, work, the work that was done on this is world class. The level of welding is aircraft quality. It's outstanding. Um, really, really well done. Very difficult to turn that into this. If you got a big stack of cash and an extra six months of time, go ahead and buy one of those and turn it into this. Do that or just click to buy it now and burn rubber off into the sunset. Um, the, uh, the paint job on it is beautiful. Sadly, there is a little bubble. Uh, on the vinyl right here that's occurring that that should be uh, addressed at some point uh, or you could probably pop it and, and uh, I'm not really sure you'd want to have a body shop look at that I don't want to mess with it so this, the bike still looks awesome the fork lowers are painted black uh, to match the frame it's a beautiful piece between the front end and the longer swing arm the wheelbase is extended about three inches and the, the, the suspension is light years better than what came originally uh, on the 78 KZ 1000. That's an LTD 1000. This is a KZ 1000, but the frames are the same. Um, just a little bit st different styling. That massive aluminum swing arm, the piggyback Kiaba shocks. Forks that came stock on the ZRX are light years better. Now, these forks have been rebuilt with new seals, new springs, new oil. The brakes have all been redone with braided stainless lines and new brake pads. You've got new steering head bearings, new swing arm bearings. It's essentially a remanufactured motorcycle, but it's a classic resto mod. Even the badge on the side, the Z Fighter badge is cool. I just thought, I wanted to show you what it started life as to see how far this bike is coming. If you look at the rear quarter profile, it just looks long, low, sleek, lean, and mean. And everybody who sees it is, is like, what is it? This thing's badass. And can I have it? As, as fun as that is to ride, you can't even you can't even compare the way this revs with this ignition, the uh, carburetor, the the, the, um, the cams, the high compression pistons. It's it's light years better that exhaust. The way it, it, it everything about this is, in fact, this bike set up as it would would have been better. Uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here, Billy. You tell me if, if I'm if I if you disagree. I'm gonna say this is better than a factory superbike in 78 because it has the modern suspension on it. Would that be a correct assumption? That's probably pretty close to true. I, I would say, yeah, yeah, it's on par with what was a superbike at that in those days for sure. And those bikes had hundreds of hours in every one of them, hand built, you know, by the top pros. But this thing is on par with that for sure, Ken. So a lot of that, a lot of the, the, uh, the speed, uh, like, I'm sure they gusseted the frames on on the on the Eddie Lawson replicas okay. and. Uh, uh, the West Cooley replicas, the ones that were on the track, they had gusseted frames and probably improved swing arms and shocks just like this does. So this would be a really cool bike to take vintage superbike racing with, with Arma. Oh, yeah. I think it'd be extremely competitive. If not, it's championship material exactly the way it is right at, right now. Set it down to Phillip mm -hmm. Island and do the high-speed circuit down there, the Grand Prix circuit, where they do all the great superbike classic races. This would be a bike that, that's a good foundation for that. It really is. Just hang a number plate on the back and go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, yeah. if you're man enough to twist this throttle, this thing's man enough to put you on the podium. It's 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 a beast of a machine. It really is. And uh, they've been developing these engines for years in, in drag racing applications where they're revved to the moon at, at a quarter mile at a time, right at the limit. Um, this one's set up for road riding. It's, it's uh, the carbs, the cam timing, the ignition, everything's perfect for I lugged it up the road a couple times just to give you an idea at low RPM what it sounded like and I tried to rev it up a little bit. I didn't even get close to red line on it ever. Um, it just pulls, 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 pulls. The carbs make the cool, well, how would you describe the sound the carbs make at idle? The clattering sound? Yeah. It, it just it, it breathes super bike with that sound, that clatter, clatter. Yeah. It, it's, it reminds me of Jeff Castine's special that he, he built. It yes. The same sound, it just, it, it emanates uh, super bike for sure. No doubt. This is a very similar vernacular to, to uh, the, the West Cooley uh, Transformer that, that Jeff had built. Yeah. Um, where he, he said he spent three months an entire winter building his, and he did essentially the same thing. A am I right? I yeah, mean, absolutely. It, yes. The West Cooley replica that, that he has has a, um, a modern front end, a modern rear end, and a built engine. 
on the original 78 chassis. So, right, we, you know what we should do? Two, we, yeah, we, 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 you think what I'm thinking? <laughs> I'm thinking the same thing. Oh we need God. to break out the break out the transformer. Maybe maybe do a couple dyno dyno challenges and uh, some drag races. Uh, about to find an abandoned airstrip or something like that. You know? Yeah, they're like twin sons of different mothers. The two bikes have the same, you know, two different generation engines and chassis blended together. And uh, you know they both they both sing. I think the the, really the, nice. the West Cooley Transformer to me, Jeff's bike looks a lot more modern than this one. I think keeping the this paint scheme, in the general the general body from like the, the the cylinders up looks original. It's just from there down that everything looks looks much more modern. You know the the, the, the forks and the swing arm and the suspension. Uh, I think Jeff going to a single shot kind of kind of um, puts it in, in, in a more modern category too. But his bike looks like a, a ninety. 598 maybe a y2k bike where this looks like an original z just like a very muscular z yeah, so but both bikes are one of a kind they are this bike yeah. right here is one of a kind when i saw this come out of the trailer i went oh my god look at that thing i mean it, it had the zrx look and I, in fact i thought it was a zrx chassis originally because of you know certain aspects and that's coming from a guy who, who owns two zrx's how many miles did you put on your zrx hundred thousand so, miles on two zrx's <laughs> so this yeah I'm yeah, very so familiar with this bike. I'm familiar with it. You know, seeing the foot peg mounts and the gusset in the chassis there, it just, and the, and the forks and the brakes, it just, I thought it was a ZRX 1100 chassis, but it is not. It's with, just, with old tins on it. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's, it's, it hits the mark for sure. It definitely is cool. Very cool. This is a bike I'd be happy to display here in the museum for you. If you buy it, I'd put this in, in the, the winner's circle in the Kawasaki row there. If you want to uh, display it here for the winner. Just let me know. Um, if you want to buy it, we offer financing through Freedom Road. We also can ship it anywhere in the country for you. Um, look at the profile of the seat, the, 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 the bars, everything's, there's nothing I would change on this bike, honestly. If, if it were mine, the, the few things we did and, and Jeff did, you know, the polishing of aluminum, the uh, wrapping of the pipes with the blue and the other things we did to it, I really wouldn't change anything. And the bike is, is, is uh, mechanically, and cosmetically, electrically, the bike's on point. It's it's a it's a dime piece. So hit the buy it now because someone else will. If you don't, and you're not going to build this bike for what we're selling it for. And that's for damn sure. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Thank you to Carl Soderstrom, one of our museum benefactors, who um, he's got a plaque on the wall with his name on it. He's supported us over the years, and um, this bike and a CB550 of his. Are, are up for sale right now. So thanks for watching and God bless America.